Good evening, it is the 14th of June, it's about 8pm in the evening, the sun has gone down so it's cool in the greenhouse and I have decided that um, the time has come for these tomatoes to get in the ground. If they've got any chance of surviving and perking up then they need to get into the greenhouse bed. Not sure how many I can fit in. This evening um, I'm prepping the bed. I've already started so earlier in the day I cleared everything out of here so there was a kale that I've moved. Um, there's still some lettuce in there which I think I'll take out in the morning when they're ready to go in. Maybe I'll do it now. Anyway, um, what else was in here? Parsley which I've taken inside and will process perhaps whiz it up with some oil and put them in ice cube trays for the freezer. Um, there was a little bit of coriander that had gone to seed, so they've got the little green seed pods, so I've taken those in, I'll use those in a curry or something. Um, I think that was about everything. Oh, and there was the peas in this bed, the early peas. I got three more pods off there and they didn't look like they were going to do much more, so they've come out. So the bed is fairly clear. Last year, I struggled keeping the tomatoes watered. It wasn't too bad. I had some water. Um, I had some tomato plants in the raised beds. Those I really did struggle with watering. They just seemed to dry out ever so quickly. I think it was partly the compost that I was using. Um, so I learnt about oyas and I fashioned one. I had a ceramic plant pot. So the idea is that you put a ceramic plant pot in the bed. You fill it with water, and the water gradually seeps out through. The terracotta and the plant roots um, uh, move towards that water source and uh, it's it's great because you only have to fill it up so much. Um, I actually had a terracotta pot that didn't have a hole in the bottom so I didn't even have to fill the hole. However, what I found was the water just sat in the terracotta pot. It never really seemed to go down. I had a little saucer on top as well so I wasn't sh quite sure it was working. Anyway, I wanted to use a similar method for the greenhouse this year so that um, when I'm watering in the greenhouse it's going deep and it's getting to the roots of the plant. Um, my plan was to saw up some pieces of pipe that I found in the back of the garden and drill some holes in the bottom and then um, bury those in the ground around the tomatoes. But found this on the street well this four of them on the street um, the other day and picked them up and brought them home because I thought these are going to be ideal the holes are already in them they're quite big uh, pipes um, the only problem was they had like ends on them which had a hole in but not a very big hole and near the l wider spacing rather than the nearer spacing so if I was to put them in like that with the base on um, all the water is going to come out higher up rather than lower down. So I've got my trusty mallet, bashed the ends in, which I've now got to kind of fish out. I've already tried and <laughs> cut myself, So, but I've got one out and I've put one in the ground. So I'll show you what that one looks like and then we'll, we'll do one together. So there is the mostly cleared bed. I've given it a good water and then I've dug a deep hole look very deep and um i buried the pipe sorry buried the pipe in there so i buried it with the holes that are closer together down and this is where it did have a top on and i bashed it out um so i got one there and i'm going to do spacing to put four along the bed there are the lettuces that i haven't taken out yet and there's some sorrel um, which just regrows so i think i might just leave it there anyway that's the plan what's dory doing reaching okay let's do it
we go. All four in. So let's have a go. This was the driest one. The one near the lettuce, that was really damp soil. Um, I'm thinking actually where I was pointing the hose probably missed this section. So I'm going to give that one another water. I'm going to fill them all up and see what happens. me and um, surprising actually they're um they're taking a long time and then the water is just kind of going it shows you how much water is needed in that soil it's gobbling it up um i took out the lettuce Ooh, stuck on hose there um so that's in the kitchen to be washed and i've also dug out the um sorrel i think it because it, it's right on the edge there it comes all over in the path it, and the thing with sorrel is um it's quite floppy and it gets messy and yeah so um i took that out now most of the things in there left the roots in the ground um that's part of the no dig method you leave the roots in that nourishes the ground um soil but sorrel is quite deep rooted and comes back and i don't particularly want it coming back again and again I think it probably will but that I did dig out and I also took out the brassica roots because they take a long time to decompose and I think they'll be in the way of where the tomatoes go in. So I think while I continue to water the pipes um, I'll begin mulching the bed and the first thing I'm going to do a layer of is the Facelia and Comfrey mulch that I made a few days ago. Um, which was in my last video. So I'm going to lay a fairly thick layer of that on top um, and then I've got two bags of tomato compost and anything else that I want to put on there. Yeah I've got um, a bucket full of banana peels <laughs> I've been collecting over the whole of winter. Um, I've mixed in some water and some nettles in there as well. Um, what I want to do is drain that off so that's the feed, I've created a feed, but then the actual uh, banana skins that are left, which are kind of a mulchy mess now, I want to put those on as well. But when I put the tomatoes in, maybe I'll use some of that um, mycorrhizal fungi thing again. Is it good for tomatoes? Flowers, vegetables, grasses, bulbs, fruit trees, shrubs, foliage plants, berries and nut trees will not benefit brassica, laurel, rhododendron, azalea, blueberry, cranberry and loganberry. Oh, there you go. Right. satisfying is that a beautiful pristine bed well except for that one bit of fennel ready for the tomatoes to go in now the tomatoes are out here they've been having a good water today so there they all are in all their sad state <laughs> oh, poor little things um so i'm going to take those into the greenhouse 
for tonight. They're all nicely watered, so they'll be ready to plant into the ground in the morning. I've got another um, tomato planter uh, bag of compost, so I can use that in the holes that I dig. Um, but yeah, pretty pleased with that. What time is it now? Just gone 9pm, so um, only took about an hour to do all that. Yeah, chuffed. Right, I'll get these tomatoes in um, to the greenhouse and call it a day. Bedtime. Better go get that barky dog. right behind the camera. Hmm. I have to move you. There we go, that's better. Uh, so it is morning, it's about seven, um, then it's time to get tomatoes planted. So um, I really recommend keeping a diary of um, your day-to-day -day garden activities. I've got one of the Sarah Raven diaries that my neighbour really kindly gifted to me. This is the second year she bought me one. Um, so this morning I looked back at last year's to see when I put the tomatoes in the greenhouse last year, 4th of May, <laughs> and we're now mid-June. Slightly different, yeah. And I would say I didn't start these as early as last year's, but my hope was they were just going to catch up. Instead, they're just looking incredibly sad. In fact, someone, bless them, commented on my video last week that um, these are the worst looking tomatoes they've ever seen and I'll be lucky to get a tomato from them but I'm not losing faith I have 65 tomatoes here I think ish um, of course I'm not going to fit all of those in the greenhouse um, that's the other thing I looked up so last year I made a map of the garden uh, including the greenhouse where I planted everything how much of stuff I've fit about 28 tomatoes in this greenhouse last year, which was too many. I lost a couple um, just trying to get to the back and breaking them. So, um, and some just didn't do anything. So they came out, but I'd say I had about 25 tomatoes in here by the end of the season. I managed that by um, being really, really brutal with um, keeping them pruned. So and basically as soon as there was a truss, everything underneath the truss got pruned off. Um, do I want to do that this year though? I've got a lot of tomatoes, um, but I also want, <laughs> I want good tomatoes, <laughs> but I'm not in a good starting place because they look so sad. The bed looks very satisfying still this morning though, pristine. It's one of those things, you know, I can't wait to plant into that. <laughs> so let's do it. Okay. selected 14 of the best of all the different varieties so we've got a green zebra moneymaker tigerella my sister's beefsteak two chocolate cherries two sun gold two gems tangerine an indigo pear drop a saint pierre and two blue fire
fit 23 in. 23, what happened? It's way too many, but I did it last year and I've got still like 40 tomato plants out there, 50 tomato plants out there. Okay, I'm going to get some more. I'm going to do some more. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Okay. So before I put the tomatoes in, I want to get these banana peels um, out of the bucket. So here's the bucket of feed I've been making. So it's got banana peels, um, a little bit of nettles and water in there, rainwater. So I want to tip out the liquid to keep as plant food and then use the leftover banana peels as um, kind of something to plant at the base of the tomato so it's releasing the potassium into the soil. Is that right? Potassium? Well, anyway, that's what I've read and I'm going to try and do. I did bury banana skins in the ground last year. Had a pretty good crop last year. Let's do it again. What do you think, Dory? How does that smell? Do you like it? Yeah, gross. Better bird, 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 <laughs> well that was a um, classic Kerry disaster um, the jar I was putting it to had it was broken so it was all just coming out then I scooped out the banana skins which stink and they're full of maggots or some kind of grub Yeah, there's no way I'm daring to put that in with my tomatoes. <laughs> that can all go directly onto the compost heap. Um, but I will, can, I will strain the liquid um, and use that as a feed. But um, yeah, um, yeah, not doing that. <laughs> I, I just don't think I did that correctly. <laughs> yeah, gross story. Gross. Okay. Right, back to the tomatoes. Okay, new plan then. So each planting hole is going to get some tomato compost and some of the mycorrhizal fungi. Um, anything else? I need to string them, don't I? Oh gosh, I've got a meeting at 10. How am I going to make this? Um, okay, so string. And I saw um, Jessie from Plot 37 use these. which I have loads of. Um, so you tie the string on those, pop them under the plant, pop the plant on top, and the string is then secured in the ground as opposed to just under the root ball to secure it. So that's I'm gonna do that, that seemed a good trick. And I've already got my wires across the top of the greenhouse that the strings will attach to. Um, they're not brilliant, but they may hold for another year. Okay, so I'm going to need 23 of these. String, hurry, hurry, compost, fungi, these things. Take a breath, Kerry. Right, <laughs> let's do it. All of this for these tomatoes that already look half dead and probably are just going to die in the ground. This is what I'm doing then. So, digging a fairly deep hole because I want to bury the tomatoes quite deep because obviously we all know that tomatoes can create roots from their stems. Then it's getting some water in the hole. And then 
two or three handfuls of tomato compost. Obviously, there's tomato compost on top as well as mulch. Then my string gets tied on to the little forky thing that's going into the ground at an angle and then being wound up to the wire. Then some of the fungi stuff, not too much. And then a tomato. In this case, I think a money maker. So I'm just nipping off that bottom leaf, getting it right down in there, and burying it right up to the next leaf, firming it in. And uh, a label. Uh, so that was number four. Only. 19 more to go. I think I'll do a few and then I'm going to have to walk the dog, shower, ready for my meeting. So um, yeah, I'll be coming back to this later in the day, which is a shame because I wanted to do it in the cool of the morning. Um, but hey ho, needs must. Okay, wish me luck. <laughs> I got into a rhythm it didn't take that long so um, I managed to get them all out and I've still got plenty of time to have my shower and uh, get ready for my meeting Dory might have to wait for her walk um, but yeah all 23 are in and although they look very close together I think it was meant to be because there were exactly 23 of those little forky things to hang the strings on hang the strings on so um yes there's still less in here than there was last year and they were okay i'm just filling up the uh pipes now with water i've obviously watered everything in really well so um they had water in the hole before they went in and then i've watered them in afterwards and then done it again and now i'm filling up the pipes um but yeah i suspect they will sulk and probably look even worse but let's all please keep our fingers crossed that these tomatoes suddenly go, oh my God, look at all these nutrients, all this warmth, all this space-ish. Let's go mad and grow, grow, grow. We shall see. This is what we have left. Dory's guarding them. So quite a few still. Um, hmm. So yeah, as I say, if I get the uh, greenhouse built on the allotment, they can go in there. Uh, but they're going to have to be potted on. Because they're clearly not happy in the size pots that they're in right now. I'm, I'm wondering if it's the compost. I used um, the silver, like seed compost. Um, but it was split bag and it was very wet and I wonder if just something nasty got in there and so that's my hope now that now it's got access to fresh compost um, they'll they'll revive um, but yeah I'll have to pot these on but that is not a job for right now because right now I need to get uh, cleaned up and uh, it's work Morning. 
um, it is Monday, so it is four days since the tomatoes went in. We're on the other side of the weekend, which means we're on the other side of Gardener's World Live, which was my last episode. Um, so this straddles <laughs> the Gardener's World Live, this episode. Um, I've put a few more things in with the tomatoes. I just wanted to show you the difference because I was going to title this video um, something like My Sad Tomatoes. <laughs> I think I might retitle it, How to Save Your Tomatoes. Some nice clickbait title there. Um, because I think there has been significant improvement on the tomatoes since they've been in the ground. Let me give you a little look. So don't be misled by uh, the... Oh, are you having a little look, are you, Dory? Wet dog. We have had rain. I'll talk about rain in a moment. Um, so I've put some basil in and I've also put, oh, it's flowering. <laughs> one little marigold and there's one there. I only had two that survived. I've got some more that need pricking out. Um, there's a calendula in there as well. This is um, cinnamon basil, which is delicious. It smells so good. Um, but the tomatoes. So let's do, well, I'll give you a, an overview first okay so I wouldn't say they've got an awful lot taller but I do think they have new growth and just look how much greener and bushier they are they've really filled out do you remember they were well I could show you let's do a side-by-side -side comparison right so there is a sun gold that looks like a healthy tomato right so that's what it looked like as it went in. That's one of the sun golds there. And you see the difference. Look how tightly um, packed a kind of, um, yeah. And the color, and then that one. I mean, there's literally no comparison. Let's try a different one. What's that one? Jen's Tangerine. Where's a Jen's Tangerine? There we go, there's a Jen's Tangerine. This is a real seeds variety. And there's the one there. 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 <laughs> hey, oh, what's been going on there? Oh no, that's okay. That was a root in the ground. It's a celery regrowing from its root. We're all right. Um, now, the other thing I wanted to say about my tomatoes, where's my tea? Get my tea back. Um, I haven't watered these since they went in four days ago um, because with tomatoes um, you really want the roots to dig down deep into the ground to find the water and make them nice <clears throat> stable strong plants and mine need um, all the help that they can get for that. What I have done though, um, well I watered in the basil and the marigolds and the calendula um, and I also watered in the pipes but I've only done it once, I might do it again today and then um, on Thursday, when they will have been in a week, I'll give all the tomatoes a good water. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty confident that I may get tomatoes this year. And I could not have said that on Thursday. So this morning, um, I want to put out more tomatoes. I want to get more tomatoes in the ground because I think I can save them. Um, now the ones... Oh. <laughs> pick some strawberries <laughs> as I was carrying these around. Um, these are the latter variety, L-A-T-A-H. These are another real seeds one. You can see they are flowering. Um, I've uh, trimmed the stems because they had very sad little leaves on. They are the leggiest tomatoes you've ever seen in your life. Doesn't matter, I'm gonna bury them right up to here. Um, and these are a determinate variety. So these do not need um, cordons, Oh no, that cordoned. Anyway, they're a bush type one, so they're not, not going to need supporting. So I thought I might put these in the um, high raised beds in the garden because um, the carrots are in there and the carrots have come up in both beds. Um, probably need thinning again. Um, but tomatoes and carrots uh, apparently go quite well together. So um, I'm going to put these in with the carrots which I think means in order to give these the space to go in I might have to harvest a couple of garlic and onions so that will be exciting we'll see how they've done um, 
before I do that, I'm going to do that with you. Um, I just want to show you a couple of things in the garden, um, which are interesting, I think. Okay, so I'm in my washing. <laughs> the wind is blowing into me. But I'm at the new bed, um, the shady bed under the ginkgo tree. And if you'll remember, because I did it with you, um, I used my homemade compost on this bed. And the joys of using homemade compost is you never know what's in it and what might come up. Hopefully not weeds, and not in this case, although some might call it a weed. So I am about 99% sure that this is all tree spinach. So you see it has the little pinky centre, and it is all along here. <laughs> Now, I'm not overly worried because tree spinach is super pretty. Um, oh, hello, Dory. Um, she brought a ball over to play. Um, and actually, at Gardener's World Live, Sue Kent had it in her, her border, her pink border. Um, so I, I feel like if I, I let this take hold in here, I'll be in good company. Um, obviously, I don't want it to absolutely cover this bed and dominate it. Um, one of the things I might do is lift some to take to the allotment and grow there. Um, and some of it I, I would just pull and eat as like microgreens, some let it grow, but keep cutting it. Um, what I found when I grew this last year was <laughs> if you allow it, it will grow into an absolutely massive plant. Um, my uh, Liam's dad wasn't keen. I, I gifted him um, a couple of plants. He wasn't keen on it because um, the leaves are a little bit furry um, and he didn't like that. I like it, um, but what I like most is actually when you do let it go massive and it makes seed heads. So I, I planted this um, with Aztec broccoli and by the end of the season I didn't know which was which because they looked exactly the same and they have these lovely seed heads that's like a, like a, a more delicate kind of um, sprouting broccoli or whatever. Um, so yeah, Ooh, get up. <laughs> my knees can't take that. Now you can see from the ground that we have had rain. So Sunday evening, I had a thunderstorm. Um, it really came down and then it stopped. And I was like, Ugh, that was great, but it's just not enough. Um, but then it rained through the night and a nice steady rain. So I actually have a water button a half full. Yes. Um, and uh, that's off the lean-to roof, which is a really good water collector. Um, so uh, pretty pleased with that. And it'll be interesting when I dig the ground now to put the tomato in to see how far that water, that rainwater has penetrated. Um, what was the other thing I was going to show you? Mm -hmm. Can't pass the sweet peas without giving them a highlight. Oh, look at them, Dory. Look at them. Oh my gosh. She got very wet on our walk. We went through the long grass. Oh, I've been picking them. They just keep coming. This is, I feel like this is the first year where I've really succeeded with sweet peas. I've had them in previous years, but they've always been a bit just um, pathetic. But this year, and this rain will have done them good. I did feed them the other day as well. Um, but that wasn't what I was gonna show you. It's not this either, but um, self-seeded nasturtium. Now creeping out of the bed, lovely flowers. We'll be picking some of those for lunch today. Now, I did want to show you um, these turnips. Oh, look at them. Oh, so cute. So cute. These will be... Um, first turnips that I've grown and um, I have there, there were a few in the other bed over there and I have harvested a couple and they're great they're yummy um, I've had them from the shops before and they're tough and just ugh, I don't know it's like what, what is this vegetable but homegrown ones brilliant ah here we are I know what I wanted to show you because I can smell it the honeysuckle has blossomed I have this huge honeysuckle at the end of the garden here. Pollinators absolutely love it and I love it because the smell, I wish you could smell it, it is incredible. Um, I came down here, it must have been just yesterday morning and I got to this part of the garden and suddenly I was like, what's that, 
what's that? And uh, turned around and saw that the honeysuckle had flowered. Um, you can eat the flowers, they are edible. Um, you can make teas with them and things. So maybe we'll try that this year. I don't think I've done that before. Um, the um, jasmine is also out, which I'd like to make tea with. I sometimes use that to kind of flavour kombucha or put on top of cakes. But this is a beautiful jasmine. You can look at the uh, trunk on it. It's quite a specimen. Oh, this was obviously here when I moved in, but um, I love this jasmine because it just stays where it is on this lovely trellis, whereas um, another jasmine that I've got like pops up all over the place. It's very invasive. So. Oh, and yes, the last thing I wanted to show you before we put these tomatoes in. We have tayberries. So this is the tayberry. And I do need to pick these before the birds get them. But actually, I have found that the birds are not all that interested. So it's just not quite pulling off yet, not quite ready. Ooh. Um, they're not that interested with my berries, probably because my neighbour feeds them so well. So um, hopefully we're not going to lose any. And on this side is the uh, loganberry. Let's see if that will pull. No, not quite. But that one. Focus. There we go. Oh, look at my gardener's fingernails and skin. All right, here we go. Oh, I've just brushed my teeth. Mm. Even with the teeth brush, though, delicious. Yeah, and it's huge. And um, probably needs um, lifting a little. It's sprawled all over. I've got. Uh, Fever few in here with them, but I've also got um, hmm, tansy. It's not flowering yet. I think this is the tansy, yeah. Um, tansy is apparently really good to plant with berries because, of, I don't know, it complements them in some way. Um, so I've got tansy along here with these berries and I've also got it on the front where the berries are. Um, and then, being that we're looking at berries, check out the white currants. There are tons of them. This has always been a good cropper. I've had this a couple of years now. And look, they're just going translucent, which is when they're ready. A little. Oh. There they are. Oh my goodness, you can really see my gardener's fingers there. Good thing we're not squeamish. Mm. Yeah, could do with a little bit longer, but I'm going to be... Um, having those on breakfast very soon. Um, now, the other thing I realised this just this morning was that um, I thought this was my red currant and that was my black currant. It's the other way around. So here is what I thought was the red currant, but no, that's definitely ooh, black. And there's some more down there. Oh, that one looks ready. I won't keep taking... Oh no, I dropped it. I dropped it. There we go. I got it. I got it. Ooh, focus. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Mmm. Delicious. What are you looking at, Dory? Mmm. Can you see? Nothing. Um, so this must be the red currant. And they do look more red. Oh, there we go. They're not quite ready yet. I did harvest a few red currants from the plant on the allotment yesterday. That was nice. Right, um, enough wandering around, looking at stuff. Uh, time to actually do some work, plant some tomatoes. Oh, but I did say we need to harvest some garlic and onions before we can do that. Right, let's get some gloves. So here I am with my super sad tomatoes. Um, so I want to put one in this corner, so the idea would, the, would be that it tumbles over, and then one on the opposite bed, because I like things to be symmetrical. Um, but this is going to have to come out, which I think is a garlic, and maybe this onion as well. Oh, hang on, there's no use snapping it off if I'm going to pull it up, is there? May, actually, I might be able to get round that one and leave that one on a bit. Right, let's take one of these onions out, and this weed. 
So I have um, already harvested just one of the onions on this strip, um, garlics, because um, the stem was splitting. You can see that this one is going yellow and is starting to flop. So it's nearly there. I, I will leave the others a little bit longer, but well, let's see what this one looks like first. Just easing around it with the hurry hurry. Oh, I can smell garlic. Here we go. Ooh. It feels like it's got cloves. It's not huge, but not bad. I'll take it. It doesn't seem to have much of a um, skin on it yet. Obviously, it will need curing now, but um, yeah, that definitely has bulbs. Uh, cloves. Look, Dory. Yay. What do you think? Good? Mmm, garlicky. No, dogs can't eat garlic. Right, I'm calling that a success. I'm getting the video a little bit better. <laughs> Not fall over. Right, um, let's make a hole. Oh, let's be careful of my carrots. Look at me, going in like a bull in a china shop. Uh, I'll show you my carrots. There they are, doing really well. So this is the new lot, the last lot are in there. And um, the tomato is going to go in this corner. Um, the grounds, yeah, it feels really dry. Look at it, really dry. Is there any moisture at the bottom? No, there really isn't. It's interesting isn't it all that rain it just doesn't penetrate the surface of the soil right well I'll water these in really well so what did I do with the last lot because this is my method for saving tomatoes isn't it so I had um, tomato compost haven't got that now because I took it down to the allotment um, I put the comfrey and um, facelia mix in haven't got any of that, that left mulch um, and we watered oh mycorrhizal fungi thing we've got that that's in the greenhouse off you go go get it fetch for mommy fetch <laughs> yeah I, I think I'd probably get that myself <sighs> oh and water In lieu of tomato compost, I've got this vegetable compost, the New Horizon one. It's quite sandy, um, and there's quite a lot of that in this bed anyway, because um, I used it with the carrots. Um, right, so let's, let's dig our hole. Now this needs to be super deep because um, I need to bury these up very far. <gasps> Bearing all the carrots. Yeah, there is very little moisture in here, even right towards the bottom. The, this bed was always quite dry. Um, I bought in the compost for it, and uh, I think I should have mixed it with topsoil when it went in because um, as just pure compost, it just seemed to dry out and has never really recovered. Um, but oh well, this is what we've got to work with. And let's uh, put loads of water in it. Put a whole jug in. Soaking down quick. Right, some compost. Okay, I'll put it all in. And our tomato. It's got a pretty good root system on it, I would say. 
Yeah, I'm really thinking that the problem with the tomatoes was the potting compost. Just don't think it was good. Right. You're going super deep, tomato. Oh, fungi. Damn it. Come back out. This, this could have been the magic ingredient. I should probably do a test where one gets it and one doesn't to see. But I probably won't. Right. Oh, I'm going to have a bit more. Right in there. Okay. Right, back you go. Nice and deep. Nice and firm. Oh, this poor garlic has got buried. Uncover the carrots. Oh, isn't one of the things you're supposed to do with onions at a certain point you um, move the soil away from the top? Yeah, I remember doing that last year. Oh, I might do that in a minute. Bit of wood chip. Come on, floppy garlic. Out the way. Well, that is one buried stem. Hopefully, loads of new roots come off from the sides of it and save it. And in the meantime, pollinators can come find that little flower. Should I nip off the flower? I should probably nip off the flower, shouldn't I? Because the plant needs to establish first. Alright, I'm going to do that. There you go. I'll eat that. Put it with my garlic. Right, let's do the other side. Oh, and I'll water this in. Okay, so we're at the corner of the other bed. And it looks like in the way here, we've got one garlic and a coriander. I can perhaps just shunty the coriander along a bit. Um, okay, let me show you the carrots in this bed. A little forest of carrots that do need to be thinned, I think. <laughs> hmm. I didn't enjoy thinning very much because I want every one of them to be a carrot. Um, okay, so let's have a look at this garlic. Now this is the shadier side. Let's see if that makes a difference. And this one isn't quite as yellow. Hmm, I wonder if I could get away with not pulling it out yet. Oh, there's a weed. You could come out. Look at that root on that dandelion. I'm going to save that as well. Maybe we'll dry it and do something with it. Um, okay. So I'll move the coriander. Does coriander like being transplanted? Probably not. Ooh. Coriander has a root very like a dandelion. Go over here. Here it comes. Oh, much of a muchness. Definitely broken up into cloves. How does that one compare? Oh yeah, a bit smaller. Oh, garlic soil. Mm. Um, right, okay. But definitely I'm going to leave the others a little bit longer. We are nearly at the longest day of the year, which is when you're supposed to pull your garlic. And these were planted before the shortest day of the year, so they have had longer. Um, Whereas the ones on the allotment, I did on the on pretty much the shortest day of the year, so they should be a bit more behind. Um, anyway, stop. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Right, let's water these in and see if. Uh, <laughs> I live up to the how to save your tomatoes title that I may give this video. We'll come back and check on it in a later video. Right. 
I hope, I hope I can bear out the claim that this is how to save your tomatoes. Um, I guess the proof will be in about a month's time, maybe a bit longer. I definitely think I'm going to be having, if I have tomatoes, later tomatoes than I had last year. So there's still lots of tomatoes to save. Good luck tomatoes. We'll find you homes, don't worry. I know how to save you, ish, maybe. Okay, thank you for joining me this week. Um, I hope that your tomatoes look as sad as mine. Well, I hope they don't look as sad as mine. Um, but if they do, I hope um, I perhaps helped on um, giving you some ideas on how you can revive them. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go hang my garlics up somewhere to dry off and uh, get down to the plot. Right. Take care. That one was my fault. <laughs>